Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode on the Stone Block 2 Mod Pack. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. I'm doing great. Today is episode 10 and I've got an awesome episode planned for you guys. But first, we got a new question of the day. If you want to send me your questions of the day, hit me up on Twitter at iJevin. But you're allowed to add one mod to vanilla Minecraft. But to add said mod, you have to either give up jumping or shifting. Which sacrifice do you make? And which mod do you add for that matter as well? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoy this series and you want to see more, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and turn on those notifications when the videos come out. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So we start today's episode off just kind of walking around the base. <laughs> Look at this place. Oh, my God. What the hell happened? This place, and excuse my French, but... Wow, this place has gotten out of control in a hurry. There is just junk everywhere. So I think to start today's episode off, we're going to do a little bit of organizing. Now, there's a few things that I, I think I'm going to do first and foremost. We need to kind of clean everything up, but I think we need to figure out our storage situation before we do that. So we have a couple of options. First and foremost, we can probably get into AE. We, I think we have enough Certus in here to do so. Um, again, diamonds are kind of our Achilles heel at the moment, but I think if we were able to make maybe a terminal, maybe just a regular terminal, see that wouldn't require much for diamonds, although I would need all the presses. So maybe we don't go that route. Maybe, I don't think there's any other kind of monitors in this pack. Uh, what's this right here? That's an extra cells monitor. Okay. What if, instead of doing that, what if we do something along the lines of RF storage? So there are modular storage in this game. That's just a regular chest. Remote storage. Makes remote storage modules available. Requires energy to do so. Storage scanner. This will scan nearby inventories and show that in a list. Ooh, that's a good one. So modular storage is pretty cool. The modular storage system can store a lot of items and allow easy searching and filtering. You must insert a storage module. Okay, cool. So to make the storage modules, you just need some pretty simple stuff. That's not, not very hard to make. So let's go ahead and kind of play with this a little bit and see what we need to do. So first off, we need a machine frame. Do I have a machine frame? I do not. Okay, what do we need to make the machine frame? So lapis, iron, and gold. There we go. Lapis, iron. Oh, you know what? I might be out of gold or out of iron again. I didn't even think about that. Let me go in here real fast because I probably have a little bit of iron. Talk about cutting it close. There might be some over here, actually. No? Wow. Salty. Okay. Put that in there and let that cook down. Let me check through here real fast because I did just kind of dump a lot of stuff off. <laughs> Yeah, this is what I'm talking about because we, oh my God, there's stuff everywhere. It's so bad. Look at all this. I actually, yeah, dude, this is, whew, this is really, really terrible. Oh, I do have iron. See what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my God, so bad. Oh, I put my lapis in there. All right, let's grab some gold nuggets. I had those in my inventory already. All right. So yeah, I, I have got to get organized today. So redstone and quartz. So we have quartz and I have a little bit of loose redstone here and then it wants us to make a chest. So let's do that real fast. Grab all that out of there. There we go. And so here is modular storage. Now modular storage probably takes power. So I'll put it right here. Okay. So we need to put one of these storage crates in there first. Um, so what do we need for just tier one tier one's a chest iron gold and quartz, which I pretty much have everything right now in there. Okay. Oh, it requires another machine frame or no, 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 no. That's not right. There we go. So there's tier one storage. Put that in there so I can put stuff in here now and I can kind of do grid items and I can also search for items. Very cool. I like that a lot, actually. Now, remote storage. I think remote storage is basically something that you can put next to it. 
make storage modules remotely available. All right. And then we have the storage scanner. OK, so I, I kind of have an idea here, right? Um, how much uh, how much iron do we have left? Let me get rid of this because I want to test something. It would be kind of cool to be able to make this remote scanner and then maybe test it and see. Oh, I wonder if it can scan one of these storage crates. Because if it can scan one of those storage crates, then we could probably fill a lot up and keep it, just keep us like the wall behind us full of those and then have it just scan it. All right, guys. So I've just been playing with the storage scanner, kind of learning how it works, right? So this thing is pretty cool for certain applications. Now, for one thing that I really don't like about it is that it doesn't show all of the items in here. Typically, you would have to search. So say I want some saplings. It's not going to do much because, for example, we don't have anything selected. Now, there are some cool features about this thing. You can select these to make these routable, which means that if there is a way to store an item in it, it'll check it and see. So if we make every single one of these routable, just like so, not sure why that's double clicked. Oh, it's just telling us where the location is. OK, so let's keep going. So you see what we got there. Um, what's it? It's so it's clicking on something. Interesting. I'm going to keep uh, clicking routable here just so we can kind of see what we got here because I'm still learning about this. But for the most part, actually. So yeah, it's not going to tell us everything that's in the inventories because right now it's scanning in the 20 block radius, which is pretty much everything that we have. So it would be cool to be able to see everything in the inventories, but it doesn't work the way I thought it was going to. So everything is now clicked. All routable. Oh, maybe it does actually show everything in there. Wow, that's really cool. OK, so say I want a sapling. OK. Oh, man, this thing is good. I like this. OK, so that that's um, kind of a big win. Right. So what, what we can do is I think um, let's do something very specific, I think. For example, let's do a chest. And another thing that I want to test here. Uh, oh, I don't have an anvil. OK, let me put this down and then we're going to put a very one of a kind item inside that chest. OK, we'll scan. It should probably be at the bottom. There we go. So now the watering can is there. Oh, wow, this is really cool. And it doesn't seem like it uses that much power either. So now if I want that watering can. Take that sucker right out of there, man, that's amazing. I really, really like this. OK, so that makes me think, right? Like if we use this modular storage or these crates, hmm, you know what? OK, I am very curious about something. I'm a very curious person, so I'm going to go into cheat mode real fast. Oh, uh, we got to open the land. I'm going to go into cheat mode real fast and I'm going to give myself a large storage crate. This is oh, I just completed a quest. I'll have to actually do that before I finish it anyways. So we're going to go over to page three of that there. Put that in there. Scan again. Go down to the bottom. Large storage crate. Wow, man, that thing's really smart. OK, that's pretty cool. Actually, I can make a whole storage system out of this right here. We don't need to do a that's fancy. I like that a lot, actually. So now that I have a better understanding of this, I can pretty much do what I please. So now it's just a matter of what we want to use to store all of our items. There's a lot we can do here. Uh, some of these things we don't want to make routable, though. For example, like the cobblestone generators don't need to be routable. The crucible doesn't need to be routable. But if we want infinite cobblestone, you know, that's where we get it from. Um, Man, that's really cool. And even even better than that, you can see what's inside of that furnace. Holy crap, dude. And this is like the cheapest crafting recipe ever. And it's got so many possibilities. That's really cool. All right, guys, so I have made a small setup and we're going to eventually expand on this. But I want to get this thing up and running because our storage was just getting really out of control. 
So in here are a bunch of storage crates, which I just got done making. From there, I have filled all of these up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a uh, crucible to run lava and power this thing. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put it like right here, probably. So let's go down a few blocks because we will need to make this work. So let's dig this out. Now I'm going to have to go through and click on every single one of these and make them routable. But eventually we'll be able to set this up to run very, very smoothly. So first things first, let's take our superheated block, put that in the ground here. So superheated block goes there. Crucible goes there. So that's going to make cobblestone. Uh, so to make cobblestone, let's do this and that right there. And I'm going to need another piece of conduit. I don't know if I have another piece. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's go down. And so here and there. Ooh, good thing you can, um, good thing you can run cobblestone next to each other or conduit next to each other, I should say. All right, so that's going to start making lava. So we need to pump the lava out and up. So let me see if I have any fluid conduit. There's no way I'm going to see it in here, though. There's so much stuff. So this is what we're trying to get past. So I'm just going to steal some fluid conduit for now over here. All right, so we'll take this because right now we're technically not even really using this. There we go. All good to go. So we have a few pieces now. Fantastic. So <clears throat> we need to poop. <laughs> Messed that all up. There we go. Back to making that work. Insert green again. That should be working just fine. Always active inserts. Why are we not putting cobblestone in there? There we go. So we're making lava. Um, let's pull the lava out of the side, go up over up and we'll put, I think I want to see the generator. I kind of want to put the generator there and then put the storage scanner here right so we can see it i kind of like that better so let's do this uh exports always active and then that should power that there we go i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get out of here <laughs> there we go and i'll i'm gonna make this room a little bit cleaner in just a second so now that this has power it can scan um so i have to pretty much activate all of these um, so these are the, ooh, the wind outside is crazy right now. And so, um, all routable. There we go. So we can see all of our items in the system. Very, very simple, but very, very effective. So I can put, um, so say I want to put items in the system. These down here are what that's for. Put those in there just like that. Anything that's routable can go pretty much inside of there. Um, it's pretty crazy to be honest with you. It is a little laggy, so you gotta be a little bit careful, but that's fine. Um, and then this thing can actually hold recipes too. So for example, say I want to make, um, say I want to make a draconium block and I put that recipe right there and then store. You see how cool that is? That is amazing. Now, the only question is, is how do I unstore that out of there? Because it looks like it stays there. Remove uh, inventory from list. I don't know what that means. Huh. I wonder if I have to break that to remove it then. I'm still learning. We're still we're learning as we go here. And then I'm assuming you can't click that out of there. Remove inventory from list. Let's get rid of all this. Store. Oh, okay. So you just got to remove it out of there. I see. Fantastic. So now what I'm going to do, um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to go ahead and clean the base up a little bit further. I also think I'm going to uh, actually change everything over to chisel as well, because I want to kind of clean things up some. So um, for now, we are going to close off the mob spawner area because I just don't really want this area to be shown so much until we can actually use it. 
I'm going to move all of this, I think. I'm not exactly sure yet. Really just want to work on storage for a while. I was trying to think about how we could do things for like furnaces. And I think for now, we're just going to kind of do that manually until we decide, you know, how we want to actually do things. We could definitely use an ender chest system. Though. All right, guys. So I've been messing with this remote storage stuff, and this thing is really smart. This is a storage tablet. If you hit uses, you can see what different uses it takes. Uh, it can take different storage capacities, uh, get storage capacities back, and it can also do wireless. Now I have some of these cards in the system. Uh, wire, I guess it would be remote. Let's take these. And then I think I've also got a tier one storage module. So let's grab those. So this wireless module stuff is pretty cool, right? So if we put this in here and we put the IDs in there and link them together, I can put this in here, this in here, and it's going to show me stuff that's in the system. Now, this is remote storage. Now, the really cool thing about this is, is that not only does it store remotely, but you can control this pretty well. So there's nothing in the system right now. If I were to put this back in here, the really cool thing is you see this module. All I need to do to link that to make the system complete. Bam. Now that that's module remote ID one, put these in the system. The storage tablet can now see inside of there. Take that out. As you can see, nothing's in there. Nothing's in there. Now, why is that so important? Because for one, we can wirelessly access this. Now, why is that important to the whole grand scheme of things? Well, if we scan, go down to, I guess it would probably be at the bottom. Um, I think it's actually this one. Maybe. That's not what I want, though. I want this one. There we go. So now you can see that that is in the system. So if I were to take that out of the system, that slime block would not be there anymore. Now, why is that important? That is important because I'm almost certain that what we can do is make a wireless loop. And if I can, as long as I can pull items out of here, it'll work. So let's go ahead and test this real fast. I'm going to put slime block in there, insert, and then always active, put the, oh, that's good. That's really good. Okay. So that's important because, um, what I can do is, is I can use this instead of a storage idea. I can use this as like an access point, right? So what we could do is, is behind the items back here, right? We could make a cable wall with uh, just conduit, like right here. Put this modular access point right there. Let me pick this up real fast. There we go. And uh, it's already got its card in there. And all I really have to do is this set to always active and then set these to insert. Click on this, put that in there, and then it's either going to go to one of these. I maybe did it work. It went somewhere. Did it go to one of the other pages? There it is. So now I can essentially access i guess it would be really cool if i could just like click on this and see all of this but since that doesn't work that way this is kind of more of an ender chest right put all that in there so that goes into the system and then is stored into the system and then i can go here and be like oh hey look at all this cool stuff <laughs> and it's all routable because now i can pretty much see into the system uh, where is it? Uh, let's go ahead and scan again. Modular storage, routable. Um, and then all of these other things are routable too. So what did we put in there? We put in conduit. That'll be a good one to look up. There we go. Conduit. So our conduit's right there. 
Now, the only thing that really sucks is there's no real way to link the storage scanner with this. And I don't know what that blue thing does or what that does. I don't think that links anything together. Yeah, there's no way to really link it together, but this is a really cool way to be able to store items into the system. I just wish there was a way to put um, or be able to grab items out. Like it would be nice if there was some kind of uh, like way to like look outside of it. I don't think there is, though, unfortunately, unless you know more about it than I do, then let me know. I don't think that would work. But anyways, very, very smart system that we are definitely, definitely going to use to our advantage. Very cool. Very cool. So I think that's probably going to take care of this uh, episode, guys. And if you know anything else about this, let me know, because I really want to use it more. Um, anyways, this is iJevin. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out.